Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today we're talking about first aid backups and why you need them. Now, <clears throat> in your homes, more than likely, or hopefully, you'll have at least some type of a boo-boo kit like this, a first aid kit like this, okay? Or... If you've been paying attention to any of my videos on first aid, you've took and made yourself a master pack. Now, why do I say that you need to make sure that you have a backup for one of these bad boys? Let's just put a scenario in plan here. Put this right in place so that you understand what I'm talking about. Say something happens. Something majorly happens. And you have to break out your backpack because maybe somebody in your family or maybe your neighbor, friends, whoever it may be, could be a perfectly good stranger if you have a good heart. And you want to try to help either save their lives or tend to their wounds or their injuries. So you open up your backpack. You use a lot of your different products and everything else. Now... You used up all those products. What are you going to do then? Well, in that case, you need to have something like this. This is a tote. And I'm going to show you all what's inside this tote. All types of extra products for first aid. I have extra thermometers. I have... Um, nicotine patches because nicotine patches if it is a grid down situation or an shtf type situation or whatever else and if you're a smoker or anything like that and you can't get cigarettes so having patches or something to help get you through the product you know is probably going to be your best bet all different types of any type of hygiene type stuff you want to have in your emergency your backup supplies that you're going to need, you know, from stuff like even dental floss, extra cotton balls, petroleum jelly, because with these two here, you can make fire, you know, extra toothpaste. There's all types of stuff in here. Cold medicines, band-aids, <clears throat> antifungal cream in case, you know, you never know. I mean, maybe... You've been wearing your boots for weeks on end and you know you get athlete's foot any of those type of stuff okay extra band-aids hot cold patches you know uh, if you get pull your shoulder out whatever it may be having some extra stuff like this is just a, a great plan <clears throat> all different types of bandages all different types and different sizes of gauze because depending on the wound you may need something like little or you may need something big. You know, baby powder. You want to make sure that you have all different types of alcohol pads, rubbing alcohol. You want to have peroxide. You want to have all these different sanitizing things extra on hand. Yes, in your first aid kits and stuff, you have the wipes and everything else and probably maybe even in your medicine cabinet or your hall closet or wherever you store some of your goods. You know, you may have a bottle of al alcohol, may have a bottle of peroxide or something like that. You want to make sure that you have a backup. Baby powder. Have a backup on baby powder. Have a backup on baby ointment because you just never know, especially if you have kids. So you got to make sure that you're going through and you're stockpiling some of this stuff to make sure that you can, you know, survive any situation now you can pick up these things here which are pretty cool because they come with a lot of different stuff in here and this is a, a wound care kit all right it's it's a whole kit in a box i got a couple of those in here you know <clears throat> nicotine gum q-tips extra mass you don't know what the situation could be it could be really smoky really dusty you don't know what's going to be in the air. 
A lot of people don't believe in masks, but having some type of protection. Now, yeah, these are just the, you know, the standard blue little masks. I do have N95s. I have all those different masks and everything else. These are just in case of an emergency situation. You're just trying to get from point A to point B. The point being with this whole situation and this video is you want to make sure that you do have backup supplies to go along with your kits because this way here you can replenish what you've been doing what have you if you've had to tend to somebody and everything else and you can go back and you can replenish what you've taken out and had to use to help that person out in a time of need so you're ready to go again when the next time of need arise that's the whole part of being a prepper a prepper is always ready but you have to be ready even after you've used some of your precious commodities that you have been put away you got to have some way to replenish those if say it is some type of a grid down shtf situation where you can't restock it and go to the store if you already have it stocked put in a tote store it just like you do your food and everything else in a cool dry place i store this right underneath the bed I did a video on that bed frame that I bought and this tote slides right underneath that bed. It's hidden. It's out of the way. It doesn't bother anything. And I have extra supplies that I can fall back onto as far as my first aid kits, which is what I wanted to get across today. You got to be more ready than just having your food and your water and that type of stuff. There's more to being prepared than just the basics, what everybody thinks as far as food, water, and all that. It goes across a wide a range of things that you use could be on a daily basis or an emergency type situation. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope this helps everybody out. I'm going to give you a quick shot of what's inside this little tote here. So as you all can see, it's all kinds of goodies. You just got to make sure that you have what you need. You know, <clears throat> all different things. Cold medicines, masks, everything I was talking about. Better to be prepared than sorry. Till next time, folks. Catch you all on the safe side. Mm -hmm.